What's good, good people? Welcome to Whole Views. Thank you for clicking the thumbnail. Today we're going to be discussing Equalizer 3. After watching Equalizer 3, I must say with full confidence that this is probably the best movie in the franchise. I think it separates itself from the first one and the second one well enough. It does not overshadow the first one, but then at the same time, it does exceed what the second one did. So on my scale, I do damn good, pretty damn good, good, all right, and trash. Equalizer 3 is good. It is a very solid film. Let's talk about some of the specifics of the movie without actually talking about the specifics of the movie. Let's talk about what they did good. This movie set itself apart because it is way more violent and way more brutal than any of the other films, in my opinion. You just don't see Robert McCall's character killing individuals as brutally as he does throughout this movie in the other movies. There are several scenes where there is kind of grotesque killings and the movie actually opens with showing the brutal nature of Robert McCall in this film. And not only do you see the aftermath in the opening, but then you see it kind of periodically throughout the film how brutal this individual can actually be. And it's alluded to in the other films in the franchise, but this one really drives the idea home that Robert McCall is a dog when it comes to the fighting and he actually puts the hands on people in the most physically brutal way that you can imagine. He gets really creative here. I even at one moment, because my wife loves the Equalizer films, at one moment I leaned over to my wife and said like, he's kind of reminded me of Michael Myers, the way that he used stealth throughout the film. And obviously it's one man going up against a lot of individuals in each film, but here he uses stealth so well. He's in the shadows. He's popping out in places that you don't expect it. At one point, we actually got a few jump scares in this movie because he just appeared and, you know, choked somebody to the point of their head coming off. Like it's crazy how violent and brutal this version of Robert McCall is. One moment that's very special to me as a movie fan is the moments where you have Denzel and Dakota Fanning on the screen at the same time. Uh, Dakota Fanning's, I believe her film debut was Denzel's movie Man on Fire way, way, way back in the days now. And now she's a grown woman and she has her own role in Hollywood and she does her own thing. And seeing those two interact on screen together great stuff. I really enjoyed it. And you know, you get a lot of playfulness from Denzel's Robert McCall, but it really kind of shined through in those moments because we know that there's some level of pre-existing relationship between Denzel and Dakota Fanning. So I liked that scene where they interacted quite a bit. And overall, I really liked the way that her character, Dakota Fanning's character was tied to Denzel's character uh, by using the lore that was created with the other films. So kudos to them for doing that. The writer's room were really in their bag when they did that. But I don't have much else to say without spoiling the movie and I'm not even going to do a spoiler review. I just wanted to jump on here and talk about the points of the movie that I really enjoyed, the parts of the movie that I really liked, the themes and the things that they kind of focused on. Visually, everything was good. The pace was very nice. I like that. It's more of a story to kind of chew on than the second one, in my opinion, and it just feels like it has a bit more weight, especially the way they put a bow on it at the end, tying this film to previous films and tying Dakota Fanning to the lore of the Robert McCall Equalizer world. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a good film, solid film. I highly recommend the film. Go check it out while it's still in theaters. Enjoy yourself. Guard your heart and go watch something good.